play some more of that if they will. We ask you to stand back up if you will. I know we're down a little bit in uh, tennis this morning. I got some in Texas this morning, not feeling good in body, and different things going on like that. God knows all about it, Sister Jen, and where they're at, hurting, and different things going on. But uh, if you've got a need this morning, I want you to raise your hand toward heaven this morning. If you're fighting, facing something this morning, a trial, a dilemma, a circumstance, uh, something going on at home, something going on. Uh, uh, at, at the job site, whatever it may be, with a child, a mom or dad, whatever it is this morning, I just want you to raise that hand toward heaven this morning. Let him see that hand this morning. He already knows what it is. He already knows. All he's wanting you to do is be faithful. Because Sister Chris, the Word says, he knows what we have need of before we ever ask. Before we ever ask, he already knows. Brother. He just wants to see if we're faithful enough to bring it to the throne room this morning. I'm going to ask you to take your neighbor there by the hand this morning, if you will, somebody there close to you or beside you. Hallelujah. We want to pray just for a few minutes. They're going to open up a special prayer. We do want to pray for Brother Everett here in just a few minutes. He's having a procedure this week, uh, surgery. We want to pray for him this morning. Maybe others here this morning need a uh, special prayer. We want to pray as a congregation first, then we'll go into individual prayer. I'll let Sister Janice will lead us out. I'll pray together. Blessed Jesus, Master in heaven, as we come to your throne of glory this morning, truly it's a wonderful day, Lord. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day, Lord, to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords this morning, Lord. Lord, it's a great day to be saved, Lord. It's a great day to know he's our Savior, oh God. It's a great day to be a part of the kingdom, Lord. Lord, we bless your name this morning with all that's in us this morning, Lord. Lord, we want to raise up a shout this morning, Lord. We want to raise up, Lord, something in us this morning, Lord, that gives you glory and honor, Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you this morning. We praise you in our trials, Lord. We praise you in our sickness, Lord. Lord, we praise you in our dilemma, Lord. Lord, we praise you that the house is crazy, Lord. We still praise you, Lord. The kids are acting up, Lord. We still praise you, Lord. Lord, the doctor says we're sick, but we praise you anyway, Lord. Lord, we love you this morning with all that we have, Lord. Lord, we bless your name this morning, Lord. Lord, let your healing virtue flow in this place today, Lord. Bless our homes today, our families, Lord. Lord, let every situation come under the subjection of the blood of Jesus this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, saturate this place today, Lord, with your love and your grace. Melt our hearts today, oh God. Melt our hearts this morning, Jesus. Melt our hearts today, Lord. We want to hear what you have to say this morning, Lord. We'll be obedient to you today. Minister to us today, Lord, as only you can today, Lord. Save our lost loved ones, Lord. Save them before it's too late. We believe you're coming back, Lord. Lord, the Word says it, Lord, and we've been preaching it, Lord. We know one day it's going to come to pass, Lord. Lord, we pray for lost loved ones this morning, Lord. You would save their souls before it's too late. Lord, we bow before you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Everett, if you will. There may be some others here that need special prayer. If you're here this morning need prayer, we're going to take a season of special prayer. We're doing prayer for Brother Everett's going to the doctors on Wednesday morning. I believe he said in Sunday school. So we want to pray for Brother Everett this morning. Anybody else needs prayer, wants to help us pray, wants to come down and help us pray this morning.
God is good. Amen. Amen. No matter how bad it may look right now or what the situation looks like, He's still good. Amen. He's still good. He's still faithful. He still honors the prayers of His people. He still loves us, Sister Christy. He still wants us to want Him. That sounds like a rock and roll song, doesn't it? No, I think I was a cheap trick. I want you to want me. <laughs> Brother David remembers that song. He's laughing. <laughs> That's all right. We can laugh in church. But he does want us, Sister Cindy, to want him. And if we want him, desire him with all that we have, you know what? He honors our, he honors our requests. He honors what we need. It's, he's faithful. He's faithful. Don't forget that he's faithful to us and he loves us. We're his greatest of all the things he created. And he created everything, Sister John. But of all the things he created, we're the best he created. Oh, that's, that's weak. <laughs> we're the best he created he says we were formed and molded and made into his own likeness and image he gave us a soul and, and when nothing else has a soul he gives us the opportunity brother Mike if we live right to go to glory <laughs> and to live in a place that words can't describe he's done that for you and I this morning if we just live for him and do what he calls us to do and just be a faithful servant he says if you're faithful over a few things I make you rulers over many. Ooh. That means I just got to do a little bit. I don't mean that to a little to a little what we do, but I'm saying if we do everything we know to do, and it might look like a little to other people, Sister Christy. He says I make you rule over a whole bunch of things. Mm. He's good to us, church. Turn your neighbor to neighbor. He's good. He's good. He's always good. If you have your Bible this morning, I want to turn to Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter three. Let's throw over here just a few minutes this morning. We'll try to share a thought this morning with you. As the Lord directs. I don't wear my glasses all the time. I need to learn how to clean them. <laughs> see if I can see now. Through the fingerprints. There we go. It's better. Philippians chapter 3. As you turn there, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, change your condition, not your position. Change your condition, not your position. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 12 through 14. Let's we'll start there this morning and add to a little bit here in a minute. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 says, Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, 
But it says here what? That I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Turn to never say, never you need to do something this morning. You need to forget where you came from. Look at him. Say, neighbor, you need to forget where you came from. Look at him. Say, you need to forget where you came from. You need to forget what you come out of. Hello, somebody. I don't care how bad you was before you showed up or how ugly your past was. I don't care what you got into. Uh, the writer here, Paul, says, you need to do something. I, don't, I, I'm, I forgot all those things behind me because what's behind me don't do me no good no way. Hmm. I can I can build off of it if it's a good foundation. I can I can structure off of it a little bit, but you know it don't help me in the future because it's a daily walk with Jesus. Hello, somebody. I can build off a foundation, but he says if it's something bad, if it's something ugly, if it's something wasn't no good, he says, I forget all that stuff. I forget it all. I, I don't think about it no more. I I, I, I forget all the I for, this one thing I do: forgetting those things which are behind and doing what. There you go. Don't be afraid to talk. I like it. <laughs> reaching forth. See, the problem, Brother Mike, with most, most Christians is they don't know how to reach forward, but they know how to hang on backwards. Hello, somebody. Yeah. We don't know how to let go of our past or reach, Sister Janet, for the better things that God has for us because for some reason the flesh don't want to step out of the comfort zone and go to these goodness and great things of God, Sister Kim, because we're creatures of... of of comfort and we're creatures that we like things like a certain way and structured and all these things but when God calls us to the forefront sister John, he tells us to go forward nothing is etched in stone most of the time now sometimes he may etch it out and let you know how but most of the time he don't do that he just says step out on faith and trust me and for some reason we can't do that but boy we can hang on to everything that went wrong in the past <laughs> hello somebody we can hang on to everything that went wrong yesterday. We can hang on to everything we done wrong to somebody. We can hang on to every, everything that somebody done wrong to us. And we can hang on to how the boss treated us and how the neighbor acted toward us, how the kids used to act, how this used to be. We hang on to all that junk. Huh. But somehow, brother, we just can't let go of it and reach for God. So, you know, I don't care how I used to be. I'm not the same person I used to be. Hello, somebody. I, I don't care what they used to think about me. I'm not that same person anymore. I don't care how I used to act. And old times gone by, I'm not the same person. I'm not the same creature anymore. The blood of Jesus applied. And those things that I used to be ugly about, now I just walk away from them. Oh, I know, when, I know how you used to be. I don't care if you know or, I don't care if you know or not. <laughs> I don't know where he used to go, but so what? You didn't know if you didn't if you weren't at the same place I used to be. Uh, you wouldn't know where I used to be. You didn't. You wouldn't know where I used to go. Hello, somebody. <laughs> That's how you know because you've been there too, and you can't let go. He said, right, "There's one thing I can do." The Apostle Paul. He, if anybody could hang on to the, uh, Brother Finley to a foundation of the past, it was him. He educated. Had, had esteem with the rulers and the Romans, all these things where the guy at one time, he was walking a high cotton, as old saying goes. If anybody could have got excited in their past, it was him. But he said, you know what? That, that won't get me nowhere. He said, I was bad. I was ugly. I mistreated the church. I used to be, corrupt the church, kill them, run them in jail, all they take. He said, I forgot all those things. No matter how bad it was, no matter how bad it used to be in the past, now I know I'm reaching forward for those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, I didn't write that down, never worried that too. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. We must press forward. We must not count ourselves as apprehended or receive anything as of yet because the race is not over. Our journey is not fulfilled yet. We're not to the end of the place we're trying to get to. None of us has stepped off on the other side yet. None of us has received our reward. None of us are in the presence of God and our glorified bodies yet. But that's where we're headed to. And until we get there, you will fight battles. You will fight dilemmas and trials in life. And the enemy's always going to throw your past up at you, telling you, I know what you used to do. The world knows. Your neighbors know. Your family knows. Blah, all this. And that. It didn't matter. 
Because when Jesus comes in, you accept him as your Savior, all those things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. You don't change your position, but change the condition that you're in. Stay with me just a few minutes. We need to ensure that things in our past, our failures, our sins, even sometimes our past successes, can stand in the way of reaching our goals in the future. Sometimes we want to hang on to all these bad things, Brother Mike, but sometimes it's the good things that mess us up too. Past successes, sometimes we build off what yesterday used to be and now what tomorrow holds. I used to be this, and I used to have all that stuff back there, and boy, I used to have all this, and man, God bless back here, now I'm out here, and it ain't as good as it used to be. Well, if I could just get back there. I'm let you know the secret, you ain't going back there. You ain't going back. We were sharing some in Sunday school uh, and, and this morning, you know, and Sister Wanda riding to church. Uh, I ain't ever going to be 25 again. And so body lets me know every day. <laughs> And it ain't happening no more. It ain't going to be there no more. No matter how much I want for it. But Brother Chris, I got to let go of it. Say, so you know what? I got to be the best 51 I can be. <laughs> That's all right. Y'all ain't got to laugh. I can laugh. I got to be the best 51 I can be because you know what? Brother Finley. <laughs> because if the good Lord tarries long enough and he allows me to live this year, Mr. Janney, I got to be the best next year. 52 I can be because 51 gonna be in the gonna be in the rearview mirror hello somebody it's all but a vapor this life's but a vapor passing through don't hang on for what we used to be reach out for what's gonna be because the best for the body of Christ is yet to come we must understand to let go of our failures and sins and the past even successes sometimes can stand in the way of us reaching our goal we need to move from past and sometimes even present to the future each of you here this morning, whether you accept it, understand it, or have received it yet, you're on a pathway to the end of time. And you have a calling on your life, whether you've accepted it and you're walking it or not. He didn't call anybody to be a pew warmer. Now, you may not ever be out here in the front, but you've got a job doing the kingdom. We all do. We all are soul winners. Go you there for all the world. We're all to do something for the kingdom. You have a calling. You have a gift to go on your life. And there's roads you must travel and journeys you must take to fulfill and be successful in the completion of everything God wants you to do and not just wants you to do, depending on you to do. Because nobody else can do your job like you can except you. No matter what you can do, He needs you to do it like you do it. He wants you to be as successful as you can be in what He's called you to be. If you're not reaching towards the future, how can you ever think of completing the race? If you're not reaching toward the future, how can you ever get started off the finish, off the starting line? If you're always reaching back, how are you ever going to reach your goal in the future? There's not a racer when I'm a big sports junkie. But there's, there's not somebody, Brother Mike, in any sport that once they hit the court, football field, I don't care what it is, baseball field, wrestling, but I don't care what it is, once they hit on there, it ain't about what they did last week or last year. It's about this very moment when they step on that court. It's about that very moment they're on the baseball field. It's about that very moment if they're wrestling and they're, it's whatever it may be, it's about that moment right then and there at that moment in time. No matter how many awards they won in the past, no matter how bad they feel or how successful they were, they were reaching for that, tour, that one moment. Nobody in a race wants to, wants to be the last one. They want to win, they want to cross the finish line first, reach their goal, be successful. They want to understand that the future is before them, the finish line is ahead of them, not behind them. Notice what he says here. Stay with me, just give me a few more minutes. Not as though I've already attained, verse 12 says, either already perfect, but I fall after that I may apprehend that which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, he's saying, I've not already attained, but yet I have been obtained by Jesus, but yet I don't, I'm not a finished product. I'm not a finished product. I'm still, I'm still on the assembly line. He said, I have not counted myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, reaching, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before. I press toward. I press toward. I press in. 
reaching forth those things which are before, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. If you read these verses here, you have to agree he's talking about a future event. Future events, not past events. He's not, Paul's not speaking here about the great accomplishments or the things he, he failed in his past. He's not saying that we should reap backwards or press away from what God has called us to be. He's saying that we should reach forth and press towards everything that God has for us. That means it's what? A forward movement. The body of Christ is always going forward, not backwards. We're always moving toward the final result. The final result, Sister Amy, is Jesus coming back. The rapture. That's the final result. And taking as many people there with us as we can along the way. Getting them saved, getting them on the right track, helping them along the way. Because we're always in a forward progress, moving forward, moving forward, not going back. We're moving forward, seeing what God has before us. Those things is the best is yet to come. He's talking about future things. Listen, we're always wanting to go forward, or we should. We always should want to go forward in what we're doing, uh, forward in our beliefs, in our thinkings, in our family, our lifestyle. No business works on a model that's projected backwards. You're not going to go to a company that says we're going to operate like we did 100 years ago. They ain't going to be open long. i seen a thing. uh <laughs> seen something on Facebook that's talking about Black Friday shopping, this, that, and the other. And, and uh, Sears come up. And, and I mean, I've seen this or not. The CEO of Sears got slammed by Wall Street. And he it sent a tweet out. That's what it's called, a tweet or tweet. I don't know what it's called. Whatever they do. <laughs> sent it out and said, it's Black Friday, so what? It doesn't matter to us anyway. He's basically saying Sears ain't got a chance. Guess what? With his attitude <laughs> and that leadership, they probably don't. The leadership in the body of Christ is the same thing. We don't, we don't work on a model that projects backwards. We work on a model that projects forward. We work on a model that, pro that projects toward Jesus coming back. On a model that projects that He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. A model that projects He is coming back to take us to home with Him, to be with Him forever and ever. It's not a model that says we're going backwards of 200 years, 200 years, 300, and work off that. No. We work forward. We work forward. We go forward with everything He has for us. We work on a model that says we push forward. We press in. We dig in. We take back what the enemy stole. And we go to the enemy's gates and take back what he's stolen from us. How many of you ever, how many of you ever uh, and I don't know if you have, traveled on interstate? How many like it? <laughs> how many like it when they're working on interstate? Mm -hmm, there we go. I'm hitting some nerves now. <laughs> Now, and, no, and all of you been here at one time or another in your life, you get out there on the interstate, and all of a sudden you can see up the road something's happening, the traffic's starting to slow down, it's starting to come to a screeching halt, but the mic gets real slow, and all of a sudden you're in the left lane. Man, that right lane looks like it's moving a little bit faster. What do you do? Get that blinker on and start, no, hey, I'm coming over whether you like it or not. <laughs> We keep moving, we keep inching, we keep moving over, keep, and all of a sudden we get in this lane here, and all right, now I'm going somewhere. What happens? The other lane picks up. My little one's ever happened to? And then, Brother Philip, we get mad because we, we got out of line. So what happens? Get the blinker, here we go again. We go back, and what are we doing? We're changing our position and we ought to just be staying in our position and change the condition that we're in. Because see, if you're going to St. Louis on I-55, it don't matter what lane you're getting in, you're eventually going to get there. It may be one lane, it may be coming to screech and halt, nobody's moving, but guess what? You're still going to get to St. Louis. We can change lanes left and right, but the road's blocked, the road's blocked. You ain't getting there. Not till they clean up the mess, not till they get it fixed, or so whatever it may be, a wreck or pothole, whatever they're working on, until they get it fixed, we're so much creatures, Brother Mike, that want to get out there and move and we change our position. But the condition never changed. I can get in the left lane or the right lane, but if both lanes are blocked, it don't matter which lane I get in. My position, it doesn't matter what position. 
the condition is still the same. Hello, somebody. The condition didn't change just because I went from the left lane to the right lane. If the road's blocked, the road's blocked. If there's a wreck, there's a wreck. If they're fixing a mess up there, a spill from a tanker or whatever, it doesn't matter what lane I get in, the condition hadn't changed. I've changed my position when I shouldn't have to start with. Too many people in the body of Christ. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Too many people in church in the body of Christ get tired of the land they're in, get tired of what they're doing, get tired of what God's called them to do, tired of working where God's called them to work. So if I can just get over here in this lane, something's going to happen. If I can just get over here where they're at, something's going to happen. If I can move over here and get in this lane, it looks like they got something going on over here. Something's going to happen. And God's saying all the time, the reason something's not happening is not because the position you're trying to get into is the condition. Huh. Ooh. It's the condition that you're in spiritually. Hello, somebody. It doesn't matter what another church is doing. You go down there, you're going to find out they got troubles too. You can go to that other church, find out they got fleshly people. They got problems. They got, every church got somebody don't like what's going on. They change churches, we change positions, and we keep changing. Boy, if I could preach like him, get in that lane. If I could sing like them, get out there. Boy, if I could tell him, we keep getting in these other lanes, thinking God's going to move me up now. And Brother Chris, we find out there's trouble in this lane too. We find out they got chaos in their life. We find out everything ain't right in their life. We find out all their ducks ain't in a row either. We find out they got problems at home. Their family don't work right. The kids don't. It's a... And we got a mindset that it's not the condition, it's the position. Well, if I could just get over here, it'd be, if I could just get down there to that big church, I bet you everything works better. Well, if I could just get over here and hook up with this guy, it'll work. if I could just get that job over there, well, let me get over here and fill out an application, a resume, talk to this guy that works down there, and let me get out. And I'm, well, I'm about to get there and get over there, and they shut down a week after you get the job. Well, if I'd have stayed over here, I'd still have a job. And if I stayed over here, I'd, I'd still got what's going on. I'd still be providing, but I thought I had to get over in this lane here. So we changed our position, but we didn't change the heart condition. We didn't change the attitude we had on the out on the outlook and the focus where we're going. I, I tell you right now, I'm one of the world's worst road rage. I, 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 I don't, if you ride me once or twice, strap in. <laughs> strap in. <laughs> That's right. No. But I get aggravated like a lot of people do. But you know what, Brother Chris, just because I get aggravated, don't change the condition that's going on around me. If, it's, if there's a roadblock, it's a roadblock. If things ain't going right, if they just ain't going right. And what I need to learn to do, Brother, Brother Keith, is, is my attitude has to change about the condition I'm in because I'm still going the way God wants me to go. I'm still headed toward heaven. We're all headed toward the final destination, which is heaven in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And sometimes, Sister Jim, the road gets rocky. Sometimes it's a rough road to walk down. Sometimes there's family squabbles and issues and things we don't like and there's not enough money and this, that, and the other and, and this one don't like and, this, and, and all these things happen to us, sicknesses and all these things and we can just get in, and we get in our mindset, Brother David, if I could just get in this other lane, everything would smooth out and be easy sailing. What I've learned traveling, all lanes got a pothole somewhere. All lanes got somebody where somebody throws some nails out or some tacks out somewhere. Somebody throw a bottle out somewhere and bust a glass. Somebody's got something that had in the back of the pickup. Don't act like you ain't ever done it. Got your pickup going down the road, also something fly out the back of it. Just keep. Did you stop and get it? Don't lie. You know you don't. You just keep on going. <laughs> then watch it fly out and it just. Phew. It happens. It happens. So no matter what lane you get in, you're going to have trouble. No matter what lane you try to position yourself into, you're going to have trouble. There's going to be, there's going to be things that, that uh, get in the way and cause you to have difficulties. It causes you to have uh, roadblocks, if you will. It causes you to have hazards along the way. It causes you to hit the brake lights. 
cause you to buckle in, cause you to put both hands on the steering wheel instead of one. That's a lot of problems with Christians too. We like to steer with one hand. Hello, somebody. Yeah. There we go. We like to steer with one hand. We want to steer with one hand. We don't want to put both hands on here, brother. We want to just put one. That way, this thing do what it wants to. Hmm. We want to steer. You know. You know. We get that look driving down the road. We got to be cool. <laughs> we got to look cool. We can't. We can't look like we're square. It can't look like. You know. I don't want to. But what happens when the road gets rough? The conditions change. Ice gets on the ground. What happens? You do. Slow down. You put both hands on it. If you got a four-wheel drive, what do you do? Put her in four-wheel drive. Buckle up. Ice on the road. Same thing. Snow on the ground. What do you do? Slow down. Wait for that plow to get in front of you. A snow plow. Because you get behind him. What's happened? Position has changed. The condition's better. You get behind him and you take off. Jesus is our snow plow. He is our plow that plows the way, Brother Phil, that makes the obstacles out of the way, that, that makes the pathway better. And Brother Keith, we get in behind him, and we let him steer the course, and we stay the course with him. We watch him to the very end because that's where our eyes need to be anyway. He tells us to buckle and hang on. He never told us the road or the, or the way to get to heaven to be smooth all the way. He never told us there wouldn't be rough bumps or rocky roads. He didn't tell us there wouldn't be trial. He told us, hey, it is a walk of faith. It is a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. We have to understand that we, too many times in the flesh, we allow our flesh to dictate the position we want to be in. He set the course before us. The road is set before us to get to heaven. He's placed us on our own road. You're placed on your own road for a reason. So I can't drive you to heaven this morning. I can help lead you. I can pray for you, Brother David. I can, I can give you advice. But at the end of the day, you're the one who gets it behind the wheel of the car. And you drive. You're the one that drives. You're the one that will make that final decision. I'm going to serve Jesus and be faithful. Or I'm going to hit a rest area and get off the road for a while. He made us who we are. And he gave us what we need in order for us to stay on the road and stay the course. No matter what you call to do this morning, sing, preach, teach, uh, missionary, prayer warrior, I mean, the list could go on and on what you can do for the kingdom of God. But whatever he's called you to do, he's equipping you to stay the course. He's, he's equipping us, Brother Mike, to stay the position. And he's saying, yeah, sometimes it's going to be hard to pray. Sometimes it's going to be hard to preach, hard to sing, hard to teach. They said, stay the course. Stay on track. Stay on the road. Stay on the road. Don't get her eyes off the flesh and then get, well, I'm going to get in this other lane over here. You know, I don't know how many of you watch NASCAR. I, I, I'm a so-so NASCAR fan. And you watch them when they like to draft. You know, and they get the, the two lanes. I don't know how many of you watch. They get their drafting together, you know, and they get the two lanes. They start hitting them in banks, man. They get them cars wound up to 180, 200, whatever they go. Man, it just, and all of a sudden, you watch them start drafting. If this one lane up here thinks they're moving faster on the bottom, what happened? He tries to nudge in there and get in there, but what I've seen more times than not is when he gets another lane, the lane he was in, <laughs> takes off and leaves him. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be out there journeying along all by myself and realize I've got no help. I've got no safety precautions. I'm out there without the Word of God. I'm out there without praying. I'm out there without prayer warriors around me. I'm out there without my church family. I'm out there doing things in the flesh, and I've left myself out to dry. And all of a sudden now, I see no, I see no help. We have to understand there's things on the road that changes our condition, the way we see things, the way we, we perceive things, the way we interact with people. But listen to me. All these things shouldn't change our position in Jesus. No matter what happens, the conditions should never change in our attitude toward God. Church gets tough, we dig in and pray more. Job gets bad, we pray. We seek God. We need help in a certain situation. There's what we do. We call people to church. Hey, I need you to pray. Hey, I want you to help me pray. Hey, I want you to help me. We dig in, Sister Janie. We don't change the position and think, well, the condition would be better. We change the condition and stay on the right track. 
God has got us on the right track. We have to understand that we have to stay in Him. What does the Bible say? He is the tree and we are what? The vine or the branches. We are connected to Him. The branch can't survive on what? By itself. The branch ain't going to do it. The branch stays connected to the tree. We're in the kingdom as it has pleased not you and not me. We're in the kingdom as it has pleased Him. And where He has set us and caused us to grow and mature is up to Him. And if it's, we're having difficulties, and we will have difficulties. We, we, it's difficult raising kids, isn't it? Sure it is. But we love them, and we do it anyway. And if we love God, brother, ever like we say we do, when conditions get bad, we keep going. We pray. We love on Him. We cherish our relationship. We don't slip out of church. We find reasons to go to church. We don't find reasons to quit praying. We find every excuse to pray. We don't find reasons we're going to quit reading our Bible. We turn the TV off and we find more time to read the Bible. Why? Because we want the condition to change for the better because we're not changing our position. He's called us for such a time as this. He's called us to be in the kingdom and He's planted us where He wants us to grow and be mature. And just because the ground, the old saying is the grass looks greener on the other side, that's not always true. He's called us to be where He wants us to be. And He's chosen us to work in the kingdom and to be mature believers. We are not the tree. He's the tree. We're the branches. We're spiritually fed by His blessings, by His grace, and through His life He gives through us. We're not an island to ourselves. We can't operate by ourselves. We're not connected to the branch. And we're not in Him. He's not with us. We're not in Him. He's not in us. That means if you feel like you can do this by yourself and you feel like it's, it's greener on the other side or you need to change your position without your condition and you probably need every night in a car has to have what? It has to have a tune-up every night in it, don't it? New spark plugs, plug wires, bell, all, you know. Every now and then we need a spiritual tune-up. Bible tells us to examine ourselves whether we'll be in the faith or not. Does it not? Pray, seek God. Let's, let's call on God, examine me, oh God. Let, Lord, if something in here that ain't supposed to be here, Lord, let me see it and kick it out. Let, let, let me separate myself. Spiritual checkup, spiritual tune up. And we need a miracle because so many times we think, let's change positions and to be all right. Guess what? If your car's missing out in one lane, <laughs> Don't be missing out another lane. Just because you change lanes don't mean the car runs better. It's messing up. It's messing up. No matter where you're at. Our condition is the state of our spiritual life. We know we're on the road to heaven. We know we're on the way to heaven. We know who we want to be. We know our final destination. We know what God has prepared for us. But our condition in getting there is our spiritual life and the way we think about things. It is spiritual growth we need to find within ourselves to understand that things aren't always greener on the other side. That things aren't always better in a different lane or in a different place. I've heard stories, and I, I got plenty of I'll say plenty. I got three or four pages of notes there anyway. But I don't know how many times I've heard, Brother Keith, people looking for a job, want to better themselves. I'm not knocking nobody to do that, okay? Don't, don't go out here saying it. But I've, I've seen it over the years. People want a better job. And I'm not knocking nobody. So nobody go out here and say. But they give up a good job, decent money, decent hours, be with their family. And believe they'll give all that up for a quarter more an hour and go on a second or third shift, not be with their family, not be at home like they used to be. But boy, I got a 25 cent hour raise. Did that really change your position? Did that, did that really change and made things better for you because you changed positions? So maybe you've been better off to cut back on your spending and stayed in the job you had because you had more time with your family and your wife and your friends and your neighbor. But so many times we look at, well, if I could just get that job. Man, I don't care what it costs me. 
If I could just get over here in this lane here, I'm all right now. Or if I could just make this turn. And all around, sometimes Brother Jamie, God's saying, stay where you at. Trust me. And I'll get you down the road. I'll get you down the road. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning, if you will. If you're here this morning, first and foremost thing is, if you need Jesus this morning, today's the day of salvation. Don't put off to next week or next year or, or you think you've got plenty of time. Give the Lord to call us out of here before this day's over. I'm not trying to preach doom and gloom or scare anybody. The main thing is we need our hearts right with Jesus. We need to be saved, covered by the blood of Jesus, knowing that if something does happen or something like bad happens, we're ready to go. Because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And we're going to stay in one of the other two places a long, long time. It's called eternity. You need to make that your mind up, get in that position where you're going to make heaven your home. Say yes to Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you're already on the road to heaven, but you just feel like, man, my position ain't up like it ought to be. Man, my, my position, I need to move, I need to move, I need to do this, I need to do that, and all of a sudden. God's not saying don't move your position. Just change the attitude of your circumstances. Just change your outlook on life. Stay where you're at. Just let me take care of all those problems. I want every head bowed this morning. Every eye closed. Somebody looking around. If you're in need of prayer this morning, you need Jesus this morning. You're lost. None of us want you to raise your hand toward heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you know you're on the right pathway, but your attitude's been blocking your success. Maybe your attitude's been causing you to have failures along the way. Just want you to slip your hand up toward heaven and say, Lord, change my outlook. Change my attitude on things, Lord. Change the way I perceive things, Lord. Don't let me see them in the eyes of the flesh, Lord. But let me see things as you see them, Lord. I don't want to lose out. I don't want to lose out, Lord. I want to stay on track, stay on course. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking you to take your neighbor by the hand. I just want to pray this morning. If you feel the need to pray this morning, you feel like you need to come to the altar, I want to pray with you. If not, pray right there. But if you need somebody to pray with you, don't, don't leave this service this morning. Without letting us pray with you or somebody praying with you. Jesus, we come to your throne this morning with glory and grace. Lord, we're so thankful for all that you do for us. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for our friends, our family, our homes. And Lord, they may not be the best family. It may not be the best home, Lord, but it is, it is home, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our church family, Lord, for the place we come and worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And, and Lord, we know sometimes we can look on the inner things and see the problems, Lord, more than we see the success, Lord. But we thank you for all that we have, all that we're doing for the cause of Christ. And Lord, we ask you to bless our church family, to bless our church home, oh God, to bless all the families here that make up Heartland Harvest, Lord, from the youngest one to the youngest at heart, oh God. We ask you to bless our families, our homes. If there's one here this morning that's lost, and need salvation, oh God. I pray, Lord, you move on their heart, Lord. Give them a boldness and made up mind, Lord, to change their condition, Lord. Let them receive you as their Savior. Hallelujah, Lord, as this altar is open, Lord. We ask you to bless your people. Maybe there's some here, Lord, that just needs a, 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 a tune-up, Lord, a self-examination. Something's going on in their lives. They need to lay down, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to give us the strength, Lord, to lay down those things that weighed us down and easily beset us, oh God, that we can keep running the race, Lord. Lord, move on our hearts this morning. Lord, challenge us, Lord, I pray. Challenge us, Lord, to do better, to be better, and to love our neighbors, ourself, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to see you in heaven. Look at him and tell him, I want to see you in heaven. It's going to become a reality before it's all said and done. We preach about it a lot, talk about it a lot, but you know what? One of these days, it will be reality. We will cross over to heaven. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Luke. Seth, go back here and we'll receive our offering. Mark, called him out this morning. So we'll ask him to go back there and receive our tithes and offerings this morning, if they will. I want you to give this morning as the Lord directs, lays upon your heart. Uh, be thankful. Or not. 
you know, it's the holiday season, Sister Joan. Let's be thankful for what we got. I shared some last week. Let's be thankful for what we got. We may look around and say it's not the best, or maybe it's not everything we want, but you know what? We got something. We got something. And something's better than nothing. Something's better than that. If you don't have it, get it home. The church is always here for you. Jesus is always there for you. Don't walk away from Him. Put Him first in all that you do. Let Him bless you. Let Him put you back on the right position. Halfway to heaven. Any quick announcements?